Most implementations of Infinity Scroll involve listening to the scroll event, but that triggers too many times, and you also need to make some calculations to check if the user is at the bottom of the page. You could use throttle or debounce to optimize it, but it's still not ideal. A better solution is to put an element at the bottom of the page and use the intersection observer to be notified when the element enters the view. If that short version was enough for you, leave a like and have a great day. Heck, you could even drop a comment for the algorithm if you want me to have a great day. If you stick around, I'll show you an infinity scroll implementation using scroll events. Then we'll optimize its performance with throttling and debouncing. And in the end, I will show you how to make it even better using the intersection observer. This is the implementation using scroll events. Here's how it works. We have a getItems function that returns a promise of an array of items to show. We can specify the amount of items we want to get, and we can also give it a pointer, which is just a number indicating the last item we got. When we receive the items, we create a card for each and request more items when the user scrolls to the bottom of the cards list. To see if the user is at the bottom, we listen to scroll events in the document and then we run a function called is at the bottom, which returns true if the user is at the bottom. Is at the bottom is the only relevant function so far. The rest of the implementation is just styling, rendering the cards and a loading spinner. But if you're curious, I'll leave a link for the repository in the description. As I've said in the beginning, scroll events trigger too much, and we call is at the bottom every time a scroll event triggers. Here, I'll scroll to the bottom of the page and log every time a scroll event triggers. Look how many they are. I already gave you a spoiler. You know we're gonna ditch the scroll events, but before doing that, I'll show you two optimizations we can make to drastically improve the performance while still listening to scroll events. The first one is throttling. Define a duration, say 100 milliseconds, for example. Throttling the scroll events by 100 milliseconds means letting a scroll event pass, then ignoring all other scroll events for the next 100 milliseconds. To use throttling, we can create a higher order function. To summarize, in case you don't know what that is, a higher order function is a function that receives a function and returns another function. It can be hard to understand at first, I'm actually writing a book about functional programming and this is one of the topics I'll be covering in the book. Quick plug, you can sign up for our newsletter and be notified when the book is ready. Now let's get back to the video. A simple implementation of throttling in JavaScript could be the following. That implementation is very simplified. I do not recommend using it. Lodash has a great throttle implementation that is battle-tested and much more complete. Use Lodash. Lodash also has debounce, which is similar to throttle. They are so similar that if you enable some options in Lodash's debounce implementation, you get throttle. Since you can use options to make them behave the same way, the differences I'm about to present are considering debounce with no options, only its default behavior. Debouncing the scroll events by 100 milliseconds means only letting a scroll event pass after 100 milliseconds has passed without scroll events. Think of them like you're swimming in a pool, and every light bulb is an event. If you're throttling, you get to breathe once in a while. But if you're debouncing, you only get to breathe after a long enough space with no light bulbs. So, which one is better, throttling or debouncing? Well, it depends on your use case. If you are indeed swimming, I recommend throttling. I won't go deeper into those two techniques, but I will leave a link in the description for David Corbaccio's article on CSS tricks where he does a great job explaining how they work and their use cases. Go, David! So far, we've been listening to scroll events and checking if the user is at the bottom of the page. Now, let me ask you a question. Do we really care about scroll events? No, we only care about whether the user is at the bottom of the page or not. 
Scroll events are just a warning that the user has changed its position. We could ignore screw events altogether and run our check every second. It would work just fine. So, instead of listening to screw events or an interval or whatever else, maybe we can be more direct. What if we could listen to when the user reaches the bottom of the page? That's all we want to know, right? And we can do that using the intersection observer. The intersection observer observes intersections between elements and the viewport. Imagine that you're on a page. The viewport is the part of the page that is currently visible. As you scroll up, the viewport goes up. As you scroll down, the viewport goes down. Now, suppose you have an element below your viewport. As you scroll down, that element will intersect with the viewport, triggering the intersection observer. By default, the intersection observer triggers as soon as even one pixel of your element is visible. You can change that behavior with the threshold option. You can tell it to trigger only when 100% of the element is visible, or to trigger every 10%, or every 25%, you name it. For our purposes, we want to know when the user reaches the bottom of the page. So we will add an element to the bottom of the page and listen to intersections on that element. As soon as one pixel of that element becomes visible, we request more items. That's way more declarative and performant than using scroll events. There's another thing I like to do when I'm implementing Infinity Scroll. Instead of requesting more items when the user reaches the bottom, I like to request more when the user is close enough to the bottom, say 100 pixels from the bottom, for example. To do that, we can add a top margin of 100 pixels to our intersection observer using the root margin option. Regarding browser support, the intersection observer is available on all major browsers, and we have a polyfill if you want to support older browsers. There's one more option to customize the intersection observer. We don't need to use that option for infinity scroll, but I will explain it to you for completeness. Suppose you have a scrollable element and you want to listen to intersections between that element and one of its child elements. Got it? In that case, you don't want to observe intersections between an element and the viewport. You want to observe intersections between two elements. You can do that using the root option. One restriction here is that the root element needs to be a parent of the elements you want to observe. If you don't specify the root or set it to null, it will use the viewport. If you watch this channel, you know that we use Angular a lot. To make our lives easier, we created a directive to listen to intersection events. It's available in our Angular Utilities library. Just import the intersection observer module from Lucas Paganini slash Angular Utils and use the LP intersection directive in your templates. You can also pass the intersection options with the LP intersection options parameter. I'll leave a link for the repository in the description. As I was recording this video, I started to wonder if there's a way to implement Infinity Scroll without adding an element to the end of the list. If you have a solution for that or anything else to contribute, please leave a comment. You can also hire us. We are not an agency, we're a team and I am personally responsible for every project. We have a limited amount of clients because, well, basically because I am human. But currently we are available for new projects. So go to lucaspaganini.com and tell us, how can we help you? Have a great day and I'll see you soon.